Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. And I think I, I started to look it up in between episodes on making this auto dispenser. I don't actually think I have to, though. I remembered. Um, I think we can. I think you can put mending and like I'm breaking on a fishing rod. And since you get XP from it, I think it'll be fine. But I'm, I'm not sure. We're going to test it before I do anything else. Sounds reasonable. So I used to work as you know, in the emergency department. And in the emergency department, it was one of the places in the hospital that had a slightly different shift schedule that you could have than a lot of the normal nursing floors. So the normal nursing floors pretty much ran shifts. They were 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Unless you were in like some specialty area. Mm -hmm. The emergency department, due to the nature of what it is, uh, and the busiest times there, there were shifts. There were 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., 10A to 10P, 11A to 11P, and 7P to 7A. And okay. you used to be able to, uh, a lot of people always wanted to be like, you know, days only. And they would apply for these days only positions, but there were very, very few day only positions. What they tried to get everybody to get into, the vast majority of positions were either you could have a day evening rotation position or a day night rotation position. And for day-night rotation, half your schedule would be on days, like 7A to 7P, and half your schedule would be on night, 7P to 7A. But the day-evening rotation, you had to do half your uh, shifts had to be off shifts, and the evening off shifts were either the 10P, or 10A to 10P, or 11A to 11P. So a lot of people liked the day-evening rotation because they didn't have to work overnights, but they worked 11A to 11P on a regular basis, which honestly sucks because it's the busiest time frame in the emergency department, like, by yeah. far. Um, so apparently recently, and by recently, I mean in the last month, they are trying to make better coverage around the emergency department. So they added a new position oops, uh, or new times. They added a noon to noon and a 3P to 3A position. Okay. They forced apparently the people... Where is mending to? You can't put mending on it. They apparently forced the day evening position had to pick up all those as off shifts. Oh, geez. Can you imagine a day evening job of 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. is considered the evening and not the night? Yeah, that's. Yeah, no. I mean, you got to fucking 3 a.m. That's nighttime. I I mean, I, morning. <laughs> I, I get the 12 to 12. I, man, if I was. If I was in one of those, like, and, and apparently they didn't even make it, uh, it wasn't even a, one of those, uh, you know, if you were hired before this date, you're, you know, grandfathered into whatever, you know, your shift requirements were that you had to, you know, work these possible shifts that you could have. Apparently it's uh -huh. just straight up like, you are now part of this. Man, I would raise hell if I all of a sudden had to start working 3 p.m. to 3 a.m., when I had specifically gotten a day evening job. Yeah. Has there been a lot of pissed off? People? I just found out about it today and apparently it's been there for uh, like a month or so now. Uh, oh, wow. and, but I was told by somebody who was a little pissed off pissed about off? it. Yeah. So one, of my, <laughs> one of my old colleagues I used to work with was like, did you, have, did you know that they had it down here in the emergency department? And I was like, no, <laughs> I haven't, I hadn't heard about it. And they told me and I was like, whoa, that's, that seems, Awful. I, yeah, I'm 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 shocked there hasn't been, and maybe I just haven't heard about it, but there hasn't been more uh, complaints from the because we you know we're a, a union shop for nurses, so you could file a grievance with the union about that. Uh, but I'm surprised I haven't heard about one because it just excuse me. Does that happen a lot? A lot of union interaction. Oh God, there's a lot. There's so <laughs> unions, in my opinion, are are good and they're bad. They were implemented for good reasons. Many of them have gotten way out of hand. And the problem that you have currently with the union is, is in my in my opinion, with a lot of unions I see, including the union that's at my hospital, is 
there's a lot of people both in the union side and in the the people who are part of the union side. So I mean the union like representative side and the people who are actually in the union like the nurses. A lot of them like to take advantage of every loophole that they can possibly take advantage of. They utilize mm-hmm. the union type stuff as a way to try to kind of do whatever they want to do. And there's a lot of people who are in the union and are a part of the union and managing the union who are just like, you wouldn't think twice that it's a union shop or not a union job. But then you have people who try to do, they will bring everything up as a grievance just so they can bring it up as a grievance, you know, hmm. those type of, those type of things. So it, it's, what do they get out of doing something like that? Uh, I mean, sometimes you get just like the, uh, you tell me that I have to work like, an extra weekend shift because of short staffing, like once every eight weeks or something like that. Oh, union, you know, so I guess that does that's not really a good one because it's like, we do have a union contract that lays out exactly what you need to do. It's more of those ones that are, you know, they'll, the people will take assignments despite objection and they'll take those and, uh, turn those into uh, union matters and what they consider as an assignment despite objection. You can always fill out this ADO form, which says, I do not agree with the nursing assignment that I received today. And so I'm going to fill out an assignment despite objection against like this unit for leverage. And it's really, there's nothing in the ADO form that's like, is this a legitimate concern or not? It's just, I feel it was a, an assignment despite my objections to it, whether it was, you know, similar to all the other assignments on the on the unit, unit similar to any assignment that I should have had in the first place. I don't know, it's very, it's very strange. Things get very, really out there. So, <clears throat> the, the whole point was being that since we are a union shop and people do pretty consistently you know utilize the union in that way to get around things and this in my opinion would be a legitimate reason to utilize the union because if you signed up for a job and you were expecting like the shift that i have i am out at the latest any day i have to work by 11 p.m and all of a sudden it's now 3 a.m yeah that's a problem in my in my right like this is something that should be brought up to the union and i'm surprised it hasn't been or at least i haven't heard that it has been and so I that's why I say found about, people that were okay to do it, basically. I mean, I guess like, it's, I guess it's possible. I did just hear about it today from somebody who. So who knows if maybe they are just having people who volunteer to do it right now volunteer to do it. Um, and I guess you could have people who. And it's it's funny if you're on if you're a day night rotator, you're allowed to work. Like so, what's considered the normal shift is the the seven a to seven p is considered your your prime shift or whatever. And as a day night rotator, what you're really, your obligation is, is to work. Um, 50% of your time can be on days and 50% has to be on off shift, but the day night position is supposed to be a seven P to seven a, but they would let you get away with doing three P to three a as part of your off shifts because it's a less desirable shift. Hmm. And so they might be getting people who are on night shift who are like, I'll do that shift. And you know, yeah, not be there until three o'clock in the morning, and maybe it's not you know that big of a of a concern yet. But man, I just I couldn't imagine thinking that the latest I'd ever have to work would be eleven o'clock and being there until three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, at least you're secure with your nine to five. Or yeah, but no, I'd rather I'd, I'd rather go work three three to threes than five eight to fives that I work. Really. Yeah, I miss the 12-hour days a lot, and I really miss only three days a week. I severely... How do you get those other four hours? You know, it's a th- so they consider a 0.9 FTEs, so it's a 0.9 full-time equivalent. And they basically, you consider it full-time for all intents and purposes of pay, benefits, um, all that stuff, but it's because you can't really fit those extra four hours into three twelves. Some hospitals I have seen do a, uh, uh, the nurses all work a, um, uh, two twelves and two eights, which I think would be a terrible scheduling nightmare to try to schedule all your nurses for two twelves yeah. and two eights to make things work. I think that's why my hospital goes against it is it's way easier to schedule just people on, 12-hour shifts, and you have two shifts a day, and that's really what you run with. <laughs> There's certain departments, like I said, that are like procedural areas that, you know, they do run different types of shifts, but... 
Man, I can't imagine having to do the schedule for that many people. I also cannot imagine that. Theoretically, it's a self-scheduling system, but you know. What does that mean? We You're supposed to be able to schedule yourself. Oh. Uh, but there's the, you get to make your your own schedule, and then it goes and gets approved from like managers and things like that. So the schedule always changes. They have final discretion. So there's certain units where it's really bad because you know it's uh the schedule constantly changes after the self-scheduling period and there's other units where it never changes at all like in the emergency department when i worked there um our scheduling team was really good you pretty much unless they absolutely like couldn't for some reason i pretty much got every schedule i ever put in um Mm. my request but it was also hard because you were scheduled for six weeks in advance and sometimes it's hard to know what you're doing six weeks from now Mm. are you near bed uh, yes. I'm trying to get unbreaking books, and they are a lot harder to come by. I'm going to put an enchanting table downstairs. Are you going to put a bunch of uh, things by it, too? Bookshelves? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, give me... I was just going to move that one, but I figured we might as well have one in our house, too. Keep getting all these sharpness, all these, you know, stupid things like that. Give me the goods of the efficiency. Uh. So you could put mending on it, then? I could put mending on it. I do have mending on it, but I want to put some unbreaking on it as well. Right. And look at the sea. Did uh, you enchant it first? I did, unfortunately. What'd you get? Oh, no, I, I did not. I just threw the book on it, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, rookie mistake. I know. <laughs> no, I don't have any unbreaking coming my way. You, you probably would have got unbreaking, too. It's what? I said you probably would have got unbreaking. You think so? Oh, well. I mean, that's it, one it, of the most common ones, right? It's not common on these goddamn books, that's for sure. No, it's not, because it can be anything on the books, but there's a limited set that it could be on the well, then, you rod. Know that's a good idea. I can just make some uh, rod. I can combine the two rods. Ah, uh, that's true. Done. That yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's probably a faster method, because you get luck of the sea. Yeah, you basically, yeah, yeah, that's what you should be doing. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. <laughs> Looking out for you. Unbra- yeah, Unbreaking 1 will go on here right now um, on this fishing rod. I should get like a really high level. I should probably get like 30 levels and do super enchant on. Oops. Super enchant on. Super enchant. Lure 3 will go on. You think it would come with. You think it's going to come with Lure 3 Unbreaking? Might. I gotta go. Harvest a lot of levels to get that going. <laughs> I really have no desire to go sit at that skeleton spawner again for. I wish we had a good spawner with like a lot of mobs and <laughs> you know that sort of thing. That would be nice. Can't we like get duct tape in this mod and move spawners? Oh man, that'd be nice. I'm going to go take a look at our real spawner. You know, look at it real good? Yeah. Because, I mean, did we miss something that we can fix? Is it just dead beyond belief and made completely wrong? I, I honestly don't understand what's wrong with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just walked over here and it lagged like crazy. Does that mean there's lots of mobs waiting for me? Yeah, that's what it means. I don't think that's what it means. I think you're going to be disappointed. It's like mobs even sitting down there. I mean, can you figure out what we did wrong? No. I've given up all hope on that thing. Come on. It's got to it's got to be It's got to be. It's gotta you be. tell it. Oh god! Uh, oh god! Oh god! <laughs> I apparently tried to dig into a wall that we were blocking with uh, with lava, and it uh, almost didn't end well. <laughs> Gotta be. Ouch. 
That guy had thorns on. That kind of sucked. I'm just, I'm just going to stand here for a while and <laughs> let these guys build up. And there's it's four wide, so entity gramming should be four times less, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just... I don't know. Go on. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why that thing sucks, probably. I'm sure part of it is... uh. The fact that um, uh, we never went around and lit up all the caves, so there's probably mobs just spawn in other places. But I mean, look we, how look how many mobs are spawning just with us at the farm that we're trying to build. Right. I feel like there's so many more there on the flat land up top where we know there's caves underneath because we haven't done anything, any caving in there, except for what we broke into. Right. Well, what's what's the deal, Jeff? I don't know, man. That's why I'm. <laughs> that's why I'm all confused. I mean, it just got a decent amount of mobs over in here. Actually, they're dropping pretty good right now. Are they? Yeah, decently. Uh. -huh. I need to break this. There's witches. Yeah. Going real good. <laughs> I mean... Better than the skeleton spotter? I don't know about better than. <laughs> I mean, that's just sad. Then. I mean, I've only been here for a couple minutes, and I'm at, I'm at eight levels. I guess what we should do is we should like empty out all, all all of our levels at some point and just go kind of like a race. Yeah, and see how quickly we can level up. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, because right now all of a sudden it's dead again. Now there's nothing happening in this thing, whereas they were just dropping like pretty significantly, and now they're just like, eh, done. We're done." I just don't know. I wish we did. We find any like cave spider spawners around anywhere? I mean, I feel like everyone I found are broken. Yeah, we probably have two. And there's no safari next in this ass. game, right? <laughs> uh, you play a different game. So I played more Pocket Edition since last time we talked about this. And I'm pretty sure it has, like, the water update. It's got all kinds of fish, man. And uh, I played around with those buckets of fish, and you can, you can just let them out. You just put them in the water, and they swim around. You can see them swimming around. So how do you get them back in the bucket? I don't think you do. Oh, it's a one-time use bucket. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you get them in the bucket. Maybe you combine a bucket and a, and a fish. fish that you fished up. I don't, I don't know, because I was playing creative, but, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. Yeah, this thing literally had a good surge and then just stopped. <laughs> uh, I'll give up on you. Wow. Maybe those people that we graciously invited to play on the server can come fix it for us. <laughs> Yeah. Earn your keep or something. <laughs> I mean, that's what I feel. Yeah, you know, I you agree. Can, you know, just stay here rent free. So right? Go Make them up for Go do the chores. You know, wake up early. Get things done. Why is there a What age do you think you're going to give Jack chores? What do you think his first chore will be? Uh, his first chore will probably be to pick up his toys. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he he likes to he, he gets we got him his first haircut and he looks like a so much more of a little man now than he ever did before. Because <laughs> um, he looked like he just looked like an old scary man because he had really like long hair that curled out at the ends. It was like these cute little curls that <laughs> made him look like an old crazy guy. It was, it was like you know it's like Doc Brown you know type of deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he likes to grab like 
things and show them to you and play with them for a while and he'll play with them with you and then he just turns around and no matter what it is he just throws it at the ground and walks the other way and you're like <laughs> you're like um <laughs> like why did you like what was even the impulse to just throw that at the ground and walk away like you were just putting it on the table taking it off putting it in a box taking it out you know all this stuff <laughs> and then it's like i'm done with you smash <laughs> put on the ground uh <laughs> and i'm sure that's like typical for kids it just I wish I under I, I wish I could go back to that mindset because it is so funny to to try to understand what it is that's going through a child's mind. Right. Somebody yeah. told me that they were in a, um uh, a child education class basically to become a, a teacher for like middle schoolers or elementary. I don't remember what she was going to school for, but they had these math classes that they had to take as part of this education curriculum that they had to learn about fens. And I was like, I don't know what a fen is that you're talking about. And she would say like, you'd have to do addition and subtraction in fens. So you'd end up with like two <laughs> fen one plus three fen four. And I'm like, what? I don't, what the fuck are you standing so me right now? Apparently what it is, is they reteach you a math class in base five. So they convert everything to base five and they call it fens to convert like, I don't know what numbers are converted to base five, but let's pretend it's like seven is, t uh, or uh, six would be like two fen four. I don't even know if that's true or not. But you know, because you Why can't- Why would six be two fen four? I, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't know how you actually convert something to base five, but because you can't base five, you would only have maximum of five numbers. You deal with one, two, three, four, and five. Right. Like base 10 system goes up to 10, but how do you represent 6 in a base 5 system? It's whatever that actually conversion is. And, well, I mean, what is... Oh, you're high. Hi, you're coming down here. What is 6 in base 5? Um, base conversion. So number 6 from base 10 to base 5. Convert. Six number in base five is one one apparently. So it'd be one fen one. Right. That's that made sense to me. So well two fen or yeah, two fen four is what I said before, right? That's gotta be something. Well two in fen five. four would be fourteen. Oh wow man, are you are you that good at converting? Yeah, you're right. It'd probably be two fen four is fourteen. Um so yeah, there you go. Two fen four is fourteen. But they would make you do math, and they wouldn't let you do. You know, you have to show your work, and it wasn't that you were just converting it. What is two fen four into base ten, and then do the math, and then convert it back? It was like learning how to do addition. Like I don't know if you ever learned how to do binary addition or mm -hmm. hexadecimal addition. Mm -hmm. uh, I, so I, so. I, I learned that in my engineering class. Or maybe not, I did. I don't remember. Not, not, yeah, not that I can remember how to do it at this point, but you actually had to show your work of converting, doing the addition of the like the hexadecimal, not converting it to something, adding it, and like saying what the conversion is. And they made them do this class in order to try to get in the mindset of a child who doesn't know how to do math. You're relearning math. And I thought that was a relatively cool concept is like make you relearn it to understand what you're actually making kids do. Because for you at this yeah. point, it's second nature. You have to understand what it's like to learn again. Right. Okay. I can understand that. There's an enchant table down here now. I see it. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. It's missing torches. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's got missing. torches to light it up just fine. It's missing torches all over itself. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, this episode is one fin. <laughs> one fin. Ah, ah, ah. I'm going to put a door over here because I'm going to need to get, gain some levels up. Uh, you know, I wonder if it could have come from around here. Does it get dark I, around here? I mean, it's possible. I thought we lit all this stuff up. And that's why I didn't even think about, like, closing myself off when I was in here. I guess he no, could have spawned right here. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's possible. I, I think I'd rather just, like, close some of this area off. So yeah. That, 
I moved the bed um, just so you can sleep no matter what. Uh, where's that? It's just right in the corner. I suppose you didn't see it just now. It's oh, right here. you know what's funny? I actually did see it and I didn't even like, didn't register in my mind. <laughs> I was just like, well, there's a bed there. <laughs> what bed? Yeah, so I'm going to close this thing off and add some doors to it so that I can yeah. not worry so much. Um, but Good I don't idea. Need wood. Uh, I have enough wood for a door. I'll make That's you a it. door real quick. Actually, yeah, we don't really want wood. Oops. Because the zombie can theoretically just break it down, right? If you put it down right, he can't, but I don't know how to do that. But times oh. have changed. I put I put that and I realized it's God switch these positions. Thank you. I'm gonna leave while you do a horrible job of whatever you're trying to do. Doing an excellent job, sir. At, <laughs> God damn it! I just placed it in the exact same spot. All right, everybody. Oh, Jesus Christ! This is just not not. Uh, oh my yeah. god, it does not go where I want it to go. <laughs> why? Why? What is wrong with this door? <laughs> Use a lever to flip it open. Oh, uh, that I, I couldn't. I, I maybe do need to do that. I don't know. That's just I think you do. All, All right. right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.